Hey yo, what is going on viewers of the tube? My name is Tyler and welcome to the only crypto YouTube channel where if you ask Charlie Lee or Charles Hoskinson, do you know Chico? They would say, unfortunately, yes. Who else can say that? You know the drill, it's time for Chico Crypto. Even though this video is most likely going to be dropped on Sunday or even Monday, I'm going to attempt to analyze the Bitcoin price in the short term. The Bitcoin price is in uncharted territory, below 9K for the first time in over three months. So I had the prediction that 7,600 was going to be hit soon, and that is due to it being the next support level, touched a few times in the run-up and Bitcoin breakout in May. This might have happened over the weekend, it may have yet to happen, but I have a feeling this will come in one single dump, causing mass panic once again and getting suckers to open up shorts on BitMEX and other margin trading platforms. The price will hang around 7,600 to 7,500 and then pop nearly a $1,400 green candle pushing the price back up to near 9K, wrecking all of those open shorts. But what about in the mid to longer term? Where is Bitcoin headed? Well, expanding out the chart since October of last year, Bitcoin took a dip under 5K on November 19th and then spent 136 days, just over four months under 5K, hit a low of 3.2K and jumped back over 5K on April 19th. Why did the price hit resistance at 3.2K and why did the price quickly get back over 5K? This largely has to do with the mining industry and the cost to mine one Bitcoin in regions across the globe. I have a series of charts with the Bitcoin price and the cost to produce a Bitcoin with the Antminer S9 and the new S17e based on different electricity costs across the globe. The first chart is based on 10 cents per kilowatt hour, the average price in the USA. As we can see, back when the price crashed in the 3K range, profitability with the S9 was pretty much break even, and miners with 10 cents per kilowatt hour cost were most likely losing money as these costs don't include cooling costs, salaries, rent, and maintenance. Now, as we can see, the cost to mine with the S9 today is around 6,650, while the cost to mine with an S17e is about $5,000. There are a good amount of mining operations throughout the US, thus these price levels will be resistance as miner profitability goes out the window below this. Here is a chart with higher electricity costs at 15 cents per kilowatt hour, and this is common in parts of Western Europe and Australia. When the crash came to the 3K levels, S9s were unprofitable and didn't become profitable again until the price got over 5K. Now with the increasing Bitcoin hash rate and difficulty, the cost has increased. And as of today, miners using S9s in these regions are losing money at this 8K level, especially with other outside costs. Now here's a chart with lower electricity costs at just five cents per kilowatt hour, which is the common price most mining farms are paying in China with cheap hydroelectric power. As we can see, it was still profitable to mine with the S9 in China, even back at the 3K drop. And as of today, the cost to mine with the S9 is around 3,200, and even cheaper with the S17e at about 2,600. Now here's the thing, back in 2018, there was a research article put out titled The Looming Threat of China, an Analysis of Chinese Influence on Bitcoin. Through the research, they determined over 74% of Bitcoin's hash power was in Chinese managed mining pools. Further, a breakdown by country was given. 75% in China, 11% Czech Republic, 7% USA, 2% Georgia, 1% India, and 4% all others. Although this data was taken a year ago in October of 2018, and the hash rate has more than doubled since then, and Bitcoin mining farms are popping up all over Russia, Siberia, and growth in the United States has increased since 2018. There is no exact figures, but based on this information, I would put China now at 65% of the hash power, USA at 10%, Russia, Siberia at 7%, Czech Republic at 10%, Georgia at 3%, India still at 1%, and the rest of the world still at 4%. Based on mining industry control and the cost to mine one Bitcoin, we will have major resistance at the 6K range because this is where the USA miners will become unprofitable and they control 10% of the hash power. The price will hang around there, but it's still possible to go lower, as the Chinese, Russian, and Eastern Europe miners can sustain a lower price. 
The next major resistance will once again be the 3.2K to 3K range, as this is where these miners will become unprofitable, and they control upwards of 85% of the hash power, the largest chunk of the mining industry. This is just at the current difficulty levels and hash rates. Pulling up the hash rate chart, everyone was freaking out that the hash rate dropped off a cliff on September 22nd, but it has once again recovered, pushing to new all-time highs. As hash rate and difficulty increases, so does the cost to mine a Bitcoin, increasing the bottom price these miners are willing to sell. The final thing I would like to discuss is the state of Ethereum DeFi in the case of a Bitcoin collapse down to these levels. Bitcoin down to 6K would take Ethereum down to the $150 level, and Bitcoin back down to 3K would bring Ethereum below 100. Now, the stablecoin DAI, besides Ethereum, is the main asset within the DeFi landscape, and its overall supply is heavily influenced by the price of Ethereum. Here is a nice chart, which shows the number of DAI based on Ethereum prices. If Ethereum price dips, liquidations on the MakerDAO platform will happen, reducing the supply of DAI. The trouble begins at 150 and quickly jumps up to 20 million in liquidations by around $120 Ethereum spot price, then jumps to nearly 40 million by $100 Ethereum. This would reduce the supply of DAI and market cap by 50% unless MakerDAO CDP owners added more collateral to their positions. What kind of effect could this have on the overall DeFi space? Well, if you're into this type of thing, like myself, you should check out DaiEmbassy.online, as it's one of the most deep tools I have ever found regarding DAI, F collateral, and CDPs. So if Ethereum was to break down and we went to this site and we went to their liquidations tab, we would see pages upon pages of liquidations on the same day. As we can see, it is F collateral that is liquidated, then turned into DAI, and the debt is repaid with this, which is then burned, reducing the supply of DAI. DAI would actually become more scarce in this situation, and the borrow and supply rates on platforms like Compound.Finance would most likely increase. Just makes sense. Less of the asset to supply means higher rates if demand stays the same. Well, viewers, for the sake of some people's sanity, I hope the markets haven't broke down even further. But most of you who watch my channel have been through this before, and these lower prices are usually blessings in an ugly disguise. Cheers. I'll see you next time.